Uh, I'm Vic Spang with the Tidewater Orchard Gardens Association. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to build a large flip float. Uh, the flip float is an alternative to the tail float. You can see here it's a little smaller, it holds fewer oysters, but it's uh, easier to get up onto your dock and work with. In order to make the box for the large flip float, you cut out a five foot length uh, from the wire roll. It's four feet wide, uh, so the five feet is what wraps around to make the box. Uh, this is the short side here, and we're going to make this 39 inches long, and I've measured down to this corner at the end of the table, and I'm going to cut here. And here, start my cut to take out the rectangle at the end of this. All right, the next step is to cut out the six inch by two foot panel. That will be the bottom of the box. Uh, we'll cut out the outside, and of course, it'll be bent up to make the bottom. Uh, so, to start with, I'm going to count out six full cells two, three, four, five, six, and I'll make it. A mark here, come down the length to 0.4 inches, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, make a mark here, around the corner, and then go down to the last cell here, make a mark here, and then I'll, then I'll cut that panel out. Last step is to remove this last part of the wire along this line to make this whole thing 39 inches long. This leftover panel will be the lid that goes on top. I'll have to be cut out later. And so when you're finished cutting, this is what the cutout looks like. The next step is to make the lid for the box. And that lid is going to be 25 inches because you want it just a little bit overlap on top of the box. And it's going to be, we're going to cut a panel so 25 inches wide and 8 inches deep. And then later on, with that 8 inches, we'll take 2 inches and bend it and make a lip so it comes down over the top of the box. So now I'm going to cut my 25 inches across like this. So I want to make this eight inches deep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll make the lid out of this. If you're making this at home, you probably won't have a bender like we have. So you can make it using a rubber mallet and you just Bend them along the edge of a table with maybe a two by four on top, and that works fine. That's the way we used to do it. Uh, use the smooth side for the outside of the lip and where the, the cut side here. It's easier on the hands when you're working with this. Now this cut, this bend will be slightly less than 90 degrees because you want to make sure the outside lip fits over the box. And so you'll end up with something that looks like this. To make the box, I'm going to start off by bending up the bottom panel we made. As you remember, we made, we cut across from this corner to this corner to make the bottom panel. And that's where we're going to bend up first. So you lock the wire into the teeth, come up just a little past 90 degrees. Next we're going to bend along the side panel, the 6 inch side panel, and it's right along this line at the end of the bottom panel.
so we can bend up the other side panel. So the last pin to make the basic box, to give you the, the top of the box, is here. And that completes your box. Next step will be to uh, make the seams Assemble the seams with the stainless steel pig rings. We'll start with the corners. We'll put three on each end, top, middle, bottom, and then along the bottom sides. Uh, we put pig rings over four to six inches to make the box. The next step is to attach the hinge, uh, or to make the hinge for the lid. Uh, this lid will fit along the leading edge of the back of the box and it will be attached with about five pig rings. Uh, when you make the lid you don't want the pig rings too tight uh, because they will hinder the hinge action. The next step is to attach the, the bungee cord and hook uh, so we can keep the lid closed. The next step is to make the floats. You make two separate floats, uh, one for each length of the uh, on the side of the box. And for this, we're using 38 inches of the thin wall PVC and the four inch caps. And first, we'll prime the ends and the inside of caps. Okay, the next step is to apply the glue to the ends of the pipes and to the inside of the caps. And go ahead and uh, apply each one as you glue them. And give it a twist about a quarter of a turn as you put it on. Now your floats are assembled. The only thing left is to attach the floats to the sides of the box. We have these 18-inch uh, black cable ties. Black is better than white because of the UV. Uh, so what we try to do is get these three metal rungs. You want you want these near the end so they, the float can't slide back and forth too much. So. You want to put this on the three inner rings, three inner uh, pieces of the wire mesh, like this. Okay, then I have to just pull it tight. You want to leave about it an inch or so of this in case at some point in the future you need to grab it with a pair of pliers and re-tighten it, but usually they hold up pretty good. So we cut off, uh, leave about it around an inch right on this and trim it up. So, that completes your flip-flop. Woo! <laughs>